Hello, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. This is episode two of a Warrior's Kidney Journey podcast for kidney patients. I know all of you have heard the old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones and words can never hurt me. No, words can be very damaging and hurtful, but words can also provide comfort, healing, and support. Words can truly have a huge impact on one's health and mindset. My podcast will focus on educating the community about chronic kidney disease and other kidney-related issues. I will provide words of encouragement to promote healing to implement the support you need. I'm your host, Anthony Cartwright, a kidney patient that was on dialysis for six years. I've had all the different treatment options for kidney failure, peritoneal dialysis, insert hemodialysis, home hemodialysis, as well as being a kidney transplant recipient. In today's episode, it will be somewhat of a part two of my kidney journey, and I will go into more detail regarding my experiences on each dialysis treatment, as well as my kidney transplant. As I mentioned in my first episode, I ended up with kidney failure after being injured in the military and being prescribed inflammatory medications for an extended amount of time. After I found out I had kidney damage, I started seeing a dietitian. She started a diary of my daily food intake and fluid consumption as well to ensure I was maintaining a kidney-friendly diet. I wanted to do what I could to prolong the effect of further kidney function decline. I continued to exercise and did everything I could to live a healthy lifestyle. But my health continued to decline until eventually I was transferred to a wounded warrior's unit. Life surely has a way of humbling you. One moment, I'm an athletic soldier doing special training in Arizona, and the next moment, I'm being transferred to Georgia and eventually placed in a wounded warriors unit, and my military job now became going to my doctor's appointments. Yes, truly humbling. People often say to kidney patients, well, you don't look sick, but yet, at times, we are very sick. That was my story. I looked completely healthy, but I was getting sicker and sicker as each day passed by, until eventually, in 2008, I was medically retired out of the military. After the military, my health continued to decline, and I ended up with complete kidney failure in 2011. I was initially very afraid, and my diagnosis seemed unbelievable, and I was somewhat in denial. I even held off from going on dialysis for several months because of fear. Those of you that are in the final stages of chronic kidney disease, remember that going on dialysis is not a death sentence. You do not have to give up your passions. Dialysis can be a life-saving form of treatment. Dialysis is a treatment that does some of the things normally done by healthy kidneys. Dialysis is needed when your kidneys don't work well enough to keep you healthy. And it removes waste products, salt, and extra water to prevent them from building up in the body. It helps keep a safe level of certain chemicals in your blood. It also helps to control blood pressure and helps in red blood cell production to correct anemia. I did not know how instrumental the kidneys are and how they affect so many other organs and other essential functions in our body until I had issues with my kidneys. There are two types of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. I decided to do peritoneal dialysis. With hemodialysis, needles are used. And with peritoneal dialysis, needles are not used. I had surgery to get a catheter placed in my stomach lining area, and my catheter access was under my left breast area. After my training, which was about 10 days, I started doing dialysis at home. I did my dialysis every night. I want to tell you more about my experiences on dialysis so that you would gather a better understanding of it. Remember, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. I did great on peritoneal dialysis. I continued to enjoy life. I exercised on a regular basis. Dialysis was not what I expected. I was thriving. I did my dialysis at night and would disconnect in the morning. I used automatic peritoneal dialysis, a machine that does the exchanges while you sleep. APD involves being hooked up to a machine called a cycler overnight which will automatically do the exchanges for you. Before going to bed, 
you hook your peritoneal catheter to the tubing of the cycler and it will do the work while you're asleep. APD must be done every night, typically taking 8 to 10 hours. And then you disconnect in the morning and start your day, like I mentioned earlier. With peritoneal dialysis, I had better control of my life. I had flexibility and freedom with my time. I had a liberal diet and my water intake was not as restricted. I had less stress on my heart and blood vessels. My blood pressure was good. My phosphorus and other blood labs were good. I was free to work and do the things I enjoyed. If I wanted to go fishing any time of day, I could. I had energy to enjoy life, and I was excited about life. I was truly thriving. My family and I went on vacations. My daughters loved Universal Studios, and we would go there quite frequently. We had and have an awesome relationship. My mindset was very much intact. My wife and daughters knew that. So, because they knew that, they felt very comfortable joking with me. They would say things like, Dad, I know you like YouTube. Or my wife would say, jokingly, don't get an attitude, T-U-B-E. They could do that because they knew I had a great mindset. And no one knew I was on dialysis. I was doing great. However, my doctors would tell me it might be a good idea to get a fistula just in case peritoneal dialysis stopped working for you. All I knew, it was working for me now, and I didn't want to hear about any other treatment options. In order to get the fistula placed in my arm, I had to have surgery, and I didn't get it done. I'm not going to make it seem as if I only had good experiences while being on peritoneal dialysis. I had some bad experiences as well. I had a bad back from a military injury, and I often had to get epidural shots. One of the times I received a shot, I ended up with peritonitis. It is a bacterial infection of the peritoneum. I had been on dialysis for four years without any issues. Peritonitis is very painful. I had severe stomach pain. I felt very sick. I had a fever and I was experiencing chills. Also, my dialysis fluid bags were very cloudy. If you get peritonitis, you will know. Those of you that are listening that have had it, you understand what I'm talking about. I got it two more times after my first initial time. One of the times I got it, it was at my youngest daughter's state track meets out of town. It was a very, very painful experience. My doctors and I found out I kept getting it because after the first time, they should have taken my catheter out and replaced it. Because the first initial time I got peritonitis, my catheter itself was infected. After the catheter was replaced, I never had an issue with peritonitis again. Lesson learned. When it comes to dialysis, just like everything else in life, I had my good and bad days. But the good far outweighed the bad. I tried my best to persevere and tried to remain positive. However, it got to the point where it was time for me to move on from peritoneal dialysis and try something different because it was no longer working for me. I passed out several times and it wasn't until I ended up in the ER after back surgery due to surgery complications that I was forced to come off peritoneal dialysis. Luckily for me, this happened. It may have saved my life. My wife would often tell me, it's time for me to come out of my comfort zone and try something different. But I was very stubborn, so stubborn, I ended up having to start internal hemodialysis with a catheter in my neck because I didn't get a fistula placed in my arm, as stated earlier. Hence, I started internal dialysis, defeated. Again, I tell my story so no one would make the same mistakes I did. A strong mindset is very important. When you deal with an illness, you are often told what you can eat, what you can drink, and other things that you can and cannot do. But we are never given any advice regarding our mindset. A good mindset is very important. It is instrumental in regards to your quality of life. It can be a difference between keeping you alive and saving your life. When I first initially started insulin dialysis, I had lost my will to be a warrior. I was only supposed to be there for no more than the time frame it took for my fiscula to heal, which was no more than about six to eight weeks. I remained there for almost a year. With insulin hemodialysis, once the person arrives at the dialysis center, the healthcare team will take care and do all the things regarding their treatment. An AV fistula is how patients are connected to a dialysis machine. A nurse starts your dialysis treatment by inserting two needles into the fistula. One needle removes the blood and sends it to the machine where it is filtered. The second needle allows the blood to be safely returned to the body. Each dialysis treatment takes three to four hours 
And generally, patients need three treatments a week. My dialysis treatment was three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Each treatment session was four hours, which meant I would be at the clinic for about five hours at times. That's not including transportation to and from the clinic. I would often go home and go to sleep. I would feel drained. I had severe headaches and I didn't have an appetite. Everything was being done for me. Here I am, a soldier used to helping others, and I couldn't help myself. Traveling, going out of town, was more complex regarding advanced planning and arrangements. If I wanted to go out of town, I would have to make arrangements to do my dialysis with the city or state I was visiting. I had to pay more attention to diet, and I had a very strict restriction regarding fluids. Maybe I was able to drink no more than 32 ounces of fluid a day. Yes, not 32 ounces of water, but fluids. My blood pressure was so high, I had to take several different blood pressure meds to regulate it, which comes with other side effects. My labs were not normal, so I had to take additional meds to manage imbalances for phosphorus and other levels. I was taking so many different medications. I often had shortness of breath and nausea. I would do my dialysis on Monday. By the time I started feeling okay, Tuesday, it was time to do my dialysis again Wednesday. That was my life. I was tired all the time. Life was not good. I feel sorry for myself. As I mentioned in my other episode, Incentive is great for some people. It just wasn't for me. I feel this way. If you're doing great with a particular dialysis treatment, stay with it. If it's working for you and you have that warrior attitude, stay with it. However, if you feel sickly and just surviving and want to thrive, come out of your comfort zone and try something different. I made many mistakes throughout my kidney journey. I hope some of my words can help you in some type of way. I don't want any of you to be who I became. I became someone that allowed fear to control me. I am so thankful that I finally gathered the courage with the help of support and realized that there was light at the end of the tunnel. I just want to say thank you to the people that saved me. I had a family that made me fight when I didn't want to fight and told me the truth when I didn't want to hear it or see it. The man that can't see isn't the blindest. It's the man that chooses not to see. Quite often, I chose not to see how far my physical and mental health was declining. They made me see and that saved my life. I am so grateful for my support. My wife, with her help, I decided to go back home and do my dialysis. I'm so grateful I have her as my wife. Please, let me support those of you out there. When you feel like times are hard and you are having a bad day, look in the mirror. Look at your loved ones' faces. You are worth fighting for. They are worth fighting for. We have chronic kidney disease and kidney failure, but we deserve to be happy. I wanted to be happy, so I made a change. I started home hemodialysis. Home hemodialysis patients use a dialysis machine at home, which provides more frequent dialysis sessions. Home hemodialysis can be performed during the day or at night. Pretty much any time of day you choose, as long as you follow the allotted instructions from your kidney doctor. Home therapies allow for longer and slower dialysis so that they can improve kidney function and life expectancy. One study showed a 13% lower risk of deaths in patients and a 77% of improvement in health. Dialyzing more frequently is also proven to reduce recovery times from 8 hours in center to 1 hour after HHD. My prescription for home hemodialysis was five days a week and for two hours and 30 minutes per day. I do want to mention home hemodialysis is not for everyone, but it was good for me. I did my dialysis in the comfort of my own home. I started feeling better. I felt better about my life. After doing my dialysis, I didn't feel drained. I would complete my dialysis and go on about my day. I had an appetite. It didn't take me eight or more hours to recover. I didn't feel tired all the time. I would get off the machine and not feel drained. I could determine when I did my dialysis. I could do it in the morning and in the afternoon or at night. I decided when I did it. I was in control of my life. It was like the bully was no longer a bully to me. My water intake and diet was not as limited. I came off the blood pressure medications I was taking. My labs were good because I was removing more toxins out of my body. Instead of surviving, I was thriving. My heart was healthy and everything was in order. When it was time for me to be evaluated for a kidney transplant, I was ready. When my sister-in-law offered to donate a kidney to me, my heart, everything was in order. And I had my surgery for a kidney transplant in Piedmont, Atlanta, July the 7th, 2017. 
my second birth. The surgery took about four hours. My sister-in-law was out of the hospital in a day. I was out in two days. Getting a transplant within itself was also a journey. Initially, I was prescribed about 30 meds because you have a foreign organ in your body and you need the meds to ensure that your body accepts the kidney and not reject it. The meds did bring me several side effects regarding mood swings and thought process. That's why it's very important to communicate how you're feeling with your family. But over time, my body adjusted. So in regards to how I felt, by month three, I was feeling okay. Month six, I felt fine. And nine months later, I felt good. And after a year, I felt awesome. I tried to eat right and exercise. Over time, the rejection meds were adjusted, depending on labs, and greatly reduced. I now only take six anti-rejection medications. My life since I've had my transplant has been great, but I do have health issues because of my kidney problems. When the kidneys don't work well, more stress is put on the heart. When someone has chronic kidney disease, the heart needs to pump harder to get blood to the kidneys. This can lead to heart disease, which is at most times the leading cause of death for kidney patients. We don't pass away from kidney failure. It's cardiovascular complications. So, at the early stages of your kidney journey, please make sure you are following the following steps. Choose foods that are healthiest for your heart and your kidneys. Ask your doctor for a referral to a dietitian who's trained in chronic kidney disease nutrition to understand which foods and beverages are best for you. Regular physical activity helps lower your blood pressure and improve your heart health. Ask your doctor about which activities are best for you, if there are any that you should avoid. Manage your weight and blood sugar. This can be done with diet and exercise. Meet with a dietitian to create an eating plan that works for you and your kidneys. Taking care of yourself throughout your journey will have a huge effect on how you feel during the stages of chronic kidney disease, kidney failure, and post-transplant. So once you get that kidney transplant from a donor, you will be in good health. I am so thankful to my donor, my sister-in-law. She is doing great. Being a donor is so important. A donated kidney from a living person is likely to remain healthy for longer than one from a deceased donor. Donating a kidney while you are alive is not likely to cause any health issues. It might surprise you to learn that your body doesn't need two kidneys to perform an important job, removing waste and regulating your metabolism. After donating, your remaining kidneys will take on the work of both kidneys. Thanks to my sister-in-law, I have been given a second chance at life. Her benevolence has inspired me to be better, not to rush to anger, to be more understanding, to be the sun to someone's dark and cloudy day. My passion now is helping others. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for such an amazing gift. Miracles do happen. Speaking of miracles, that is a perfect segue to what I want to talk about next. There are two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle. The other is though everything is a miracle. There is a huge epidemic for chronic kidney disease and kidney failure. I've been to clinics talking to a husband and wife, thinking one is dropping off the other for dialysis, but they are both there to do their dialysis. I've been to clinics talking to patients and a whole family, brothers and sisters, cousins, are all there to do their dialysis. I have also seen toddlers, teenagers in high school, or young adults in their 20s on dialysis. Both of my good friends that were the best men at my wedding passed away of kidney failure. I have regret to this day that I couldn't do anything to help them. But we as a warrior community, we all have to work together. We can give kidney failure a good fight. So, those of you that are out there struggling and are not doing well, please keep fighting and never give up. As long as you fight, your miracle is possible. You have support. You have a warrior community willing to stand beside you and help you with your journey. You are not alone. You deserve to be happy. Take care of yourselves. Be your own advocate. Let's enjoy life. Thrive. Be a warrior. A true warrior fights, not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. At one point, metaphorically speaking, I would often look out the window and see men with shovels digging, and I thought they were digging my grave. However, seeds were being planted. Because of my journey, I'm a far better person than I've ever been before. My life is full of purpose. If yours is not, it can be full of purpose as well. I am going to close with Maya Angelou. May she rest in peace. She said, people often forget what you say. They even forget what you do. But they never forget how you make them feel. 
There was a time in my life when I felt like I had no hope or independence. My support made me feel like I had hope. Hopefully, this warrior community can do the same for you. I hope I can inspire and motivate you to be a warrior and a better version of yourself. Remember, as long as you fight, that miracle is possible. Again, thank you all for listening to my podcast. I welcome you to be a part of this warrior community. So please download each episode. If any of you have any questions or would like for me to discuss any specific topics in future episodes, please contact me at a Cartwright at a warrior's kidney journey.com. It's been a pleasure speaking with y'all and make it a warrior day. Thank you.